Professor Siebenrock and uh, the entire Burn Symposium to have this opportunity to present. It's always uh, an honor. Uh, while I'm presenting this, group, this uh, data on behalf of the uh, anchor group, I certainly want to acknowledge that this is not my own. I'm simply the presenter, but it reflects the great work of all the members of the anchor network. Uh, in particular, I want to acknowledge Jeff Neppel and John Colosi, who have assisted greatly in, in uh, collecting and analyzing this data together. I have these disclosures, none of which are relevant to, uh, to this talk. Uh, the Academic Network of Conservational Hip Outcomes Research is a study group uh, in North America uh, that is administered under the direction of Washington University and largely spearheaded by the great work of John Cloacy, who, who is certainly here. Uh, the mission of this group is to improve the diagnosis and treatment of adolescent young adult patients with prearthritic hip disease. As part of these missions have been a, a prospective cohorts both in the areas of treatments for dysplasia as well as femoral acetabular impingement with robust patient reported outcomes to assess patient function, hip pain, and overall health. And so in this regard, the anchor group st shares the vision of improving the care for patients afflicted with prearthritic hip disease. Uh, it truly is a multi-center uh, uh, enterprise, uh, largely consisting of providers from all of these great sites at North America, all of whom have contributed in some capacity academically or directly through inclusion of their clinical practice into these, these outcomes. Uh, these are the respective sites, as you can see here, and many of the providers are here today uh, uh, to represent uh, their own respective research programs. Again, these are the authors of this work. It's certainly not uh, my own. And again, I would acknowledge all of these providers, many of whom are here, and again, John and Jeff for, for doing the yeoman's work of, of helping to keep this moving forward. While I've been asked to present uh, specifically on the FAI cohort in this group, uh, we know that uh, an improved understanding of patient and disease-specific characteristics which affect outcomes after surgical treatment of FAI is critical to assure that we're selecting the right patients. In this regard, uh, we know that preoperative patient-reported outcomes may be one of the strongest predictors of our postoperative outcomes. We also wa wonder whether more severe symptoms or severe structural pathology may in fact lead to an impaired ultimate outcome compared to patients with milder morphology or better baseline scores. We've tried to learn from other multi-center cohorts in, in North America, namely the Moon and Mars cohorts, which have done similar work in knee and shoulder surgery. So the purpose of this particular cohort and study was to report on the minimum one-year outcomes of a prospective group of patients undergoing FAI surgery, both by open or arthroscopic approaches. And for the purposes of this talk, I wanted to focus on a few specific questions, including outcomes of primary versus revision surgery, selection of a surgical approach, either a surgical dislocation or arthroscopic approach, the impact of gender on outcomes, and finally, if we look at all of these different variables, are there any global predictors of outcome? So again, as I've mentioned, this is a prospective multi-center cohort with 11 surgeons and eight centers. In 2013, uh, this was published by the anchor group in, uh, reporting on over 1,000 patients which were collected from 2008 to 2011 with a demographic that is representative of our typical young population who present for symptomatic prearthritic hip disease. With regard to the FAI cohort, this was our inclusion and exclusion criteria. Essentially, it was CAM or combined uh, CAM and pincer type morphology with typical structural findings of CAM and or uh, focal retroversion and impingement. Uh, patients had to have a tonus grade zero or one, two or greater was excluded, as were prior hip surgeries, prior slip epiphyses, or Perthes disease. <clears throat> These were our patient reported outcomes that were assessed, including modified Harris hip, uh, who score, WOMAC, as well as a UCLA activity scale, and a number of patient characteristics and demographics were collected. Uh, recently, we've now reached a point where we can analyze our, our minimum one-year outcomes. This was analyzed in a number of different ways just recently, both by univariate analysis to compare absolute values, chi-squared tests to compare frequencies, and now a more a complex multiple linear regression model to give us some predictors of outcome. So to report on that cohort to you today, it was a, a large population which gives us good power. We had 869 HIPs that met this inclusion criteria, approximately 700 of whom have met this one-year minimum follow-up, which achieved 80%, uh, just above 80% follow-up. Again, the mean age was around 30 years with a slightly greater female than male population. Uh, you can see here about 10% of these patients had bilateral surgery, about 7.5% were revisions. We did have a 10% quote unquote failure rate in this group. In this particular group, failure was defined as an endpoint of either requiring a revision surgery or a conversion to a hip replacement by the time of final follow up. 
with a mean follow-up duration of four years across this cohort. These were the typical measures for FAI with a mean maximum alpha angle of 61 degrees, mean lateral center edge angle about 30 degrees, and again, this tonus grade and, and radiographic signs. So in terms of just the overall cohort and outcomes, uh, this is in line with, I think, what has been reported in the literature. If you look at our uh, modified Harris HIP score, our WOMAC total, or WHOOS total, in all of these groups we see significant improvement, both by the absolute outcome as well as the delta from pre to post. And this is very statistically significant across all groups. Uh, over 70% of the patients achieved the minimum uh, MCID for the modified Harris HIP score, which is eight points. Uh, but only about 54% of them achieved a pass of greater than 84, suggesting that many of these patients had a significant improvement by delta, but maybe not all our patients achieved good to excellent results by their absolute final result. When we looked at the question of primary versus revision surgery, as I mentioned, about 54 patients in this cohort were in the revision group. Uh, when you looked at their baseline demographic, there was no difference in age, BMI, or follow-up length. Uh, understandably, the revision surgery population had some lower preoperative baseline scores. They actually had lower preoperative alpha angles, suggesting a partially corrected CAM-type deformity, but there was no significant difference in tonus grade or other radiographic findings. And interestingly here, at least with this cohort, we found no significant difference either by their absolute outcome score or their delta change in pre- to post-operative score by these same patient-reported outcomes, the Hoos, Womack, and modified Harris HIP. When we then controlled for all other factors, including age, BMI, and gender, there was no difference found in potential improvement. This was interesting to us because previous studies, including some of our own, have suggested a potential ceiling effect with revision surgery. But at least in this cohort, uh, it appeared that the potential for improvement with a revision surgical intervention uh, was still preserved. Uh, this was an interesting finding for us. We did compare the open to arthroscopic cohort in these 700 patients. There were 407 arthroscopies compared to 226 surgical dislocations. If you look at their baseline demographic differences, the arthroscopic patients were slightly older. They had a slightly higher tonus grade. Uh, but interestingly, they had what appeared to be less severe acetabular-sided deformities, both assessed by pre-op LCEA, but also by evidence of a po positive posterior wall or crossover sign suggesting perhaps our indications for the arthroscopic surgery may have been slightly different, as this was not randomized, but rather prospective. Uh, we actually did find statistically significant differences in terms of outcomes in this group. You can see here both by Hoos total, the Womack total, and modified Harris HIP score. As humbling as it is to admit as an arthroscopist, the surgical dislocation groups actually did statistically better across all of these parameters, both by absolute score as well as by the delta in these metrics. Uh, when we uh, actually controlled for all other variables, including age, BMI, and gender, uh, this was preserved. And uh, if you look at the modified Harris HIP score, our, our conclusion by statistical analysis was that selecting your surgical approach alone would have a four-point difference on the, the outcome of a modified Harris HIP score at one year out. This, of course, does not achieve the MCID of eight points, so this may not be a clinically important significant difference, but nonetheless was a significant difference that was preserved across this highly powered study. When we looked at gender, this was the results for males and females. Males had a higher BMI at baseline. Interestingly, males started at a higher preoperative baseline. They had larger camp type deformities as assessed by alpha angle and more arthritis as assessed by tonus grade. They had no difference in acetabular sided deformities. Interestingly, there were significant differences based on gender in this population. The males actually uh, ended up doing better by absolute score. Uh, but the females actually did better by the magnitude of improvement. So here, um, summarized, females do less well if you look at the absolute score alone, but if you look at the magnitude of improvement from their lower impaired baseline, they actually have a greater delta of improvement. For me, in a simple-minded fashion, I've tried to illustrate that here by this diagram, which has been preserved um, in a number of other prospective studies. You can see here the females start out lower on their pre-op score, but their delta ends up being greater, even though they finish at a lower absolute uh, outcome compared to the males. Uh, we'll show later when we look at global predictors of outcome that this gender difference appears to be eliminated in a multivariate model because the entire difference seems to be related to their preoperative baseline score such that gender becomes a surrogate for their preoperative baseline. 
So in summary, when we did our global multivariate model to really see of all these different factors, what was a predictor of outcome for FAI surgery, we looked at age, BMI, gender, preoperative baseline score, the maximum alpha angle, tonus grade, osteoplasty performed, whether a labor repair or debridement was performed, whether a capsule repair or capsulectomy was performed. The only variables that appeared to be predictive were baseline scores, uh, UCLA scores, uh, whether an osteoplasty was performed or not, and finally BMI in certain series. Again, consistently showing that with this kind of high power, uh, preoperative baseline and performing an appropriate osseous correction appear to be the most important predictors of our final outcome. So in summary, we have one-year data with a well-powered multicenter cohort to report. Some preliminary conclusions are that surgical treatment of FAI is effective, both by absolute magnitude and delta improvement. Both our revision and primary cohorts had a favorable outcome uh, that was not significantly different from one another. Surgical dislocation did statistically better than arthroscopy, but that difference may not meet the minimally clinically important difference. Females do less well than males by the absolute uh, patient reported outcome, but they demonstrate a greater magnitude of improvement. These gender differences, however, are a surrogate and secondary to the lower preoperative baseline in the female population. And finally, preoperative scores and an osseous correction of the deformity appear to be the most important and consistent global predictors of your final postoperative outcome. Thank you. <laughs>